Let's take a look at the new virtual camera workflows which we've added to R21.1. So the virtual camera workflows are intended for extended reality applications like this, where we have an LED cube set up and we want to create some more interesting camera looks than our single camera setup is able to give us. So if I open up my MR set, you can see that from that camera's perspective, we've got a really nice shot at the stage and everything's looking good, perspective's right, and the, the uh, puck character is standing in the right place and so on. But it's a very static scene, it's a single camera. And yes, we could track that camera, we could move it around, but we're still restricted to a single camera setup. With virtual cameras, what we can do is we can take the single camera in the studio and use that to actually allow us to create a multiple camera setup. So we create virtual cameras inside the camera widget and you can create a virtual camera just the same way as creating a normal camera. And that virtual camera will appear in the world center of the stage and it gets parented to a real camera. So I link it through to a camera that actually exists in the stage. And then I can set its location on, site, on the stage and place it wherever I want. Now the plan with a virtual camera is to create a camera move that you want to see either a static shot or a dynamic shot using animation and then to change the perspective both of the pixels on the led and the captured frame from the real camera so that we can make it look as if we have a camera in the right place so this works best when you're doing things like a pull back in the scene where maybe your physical studio only has a certain amount of space within it but you want your virtual camera to uh, give you a wider shot of the scene and using the set extension logic we can fill in all of that alpha with uh, with 3d scene um, so let's do that first of all so what we've got is we've got a virtual camera which is a child of the uh, the main camera and then that's now placed uh, seven meters further back. So we've got it uh, sitting nicely back in the scene and we've got a nice wide view of the world. With the uh, MR set, I can create my, uh, either my camera override or my controller, and I can just simply switch to the virtual camera and then disguise will seamlessly cut to a view where we now have a nice wide view of our Unreal Engine scene whilst having a live feed from the camera fed into that space. So this is still a live scene. In fact, this camera is still live, so I can I can move that camera and we will we will see an updated perspective in all of the, the space. So if that camera was tracked, I can still have a static locked off shot from this hero position further back, which is composited and uh, and done by distorting the image into into the right plane. Now, uh, virtual cameras can also adjust the lens intrinsics of the camera itself. So it can either inherit the lens intrinsics or you can uh, put local intrinsics in. And this is great if you want to match up multiple stages. Um, maybe you shot something previously and you want to, uh, to do some pickup shots and use the same lens intrinsics so that you've got the same, uh, same behavior or um, so that you can just uh, match a couple of different cameras in your stage um, that have different intrinsics or different um, field of views, for example, and you want to you want to set a specific one for your, your virtual camera. The other thing you can do with virtual cameras is make them dynamic. So virtual cameras are animatable using the animate objects workflows, which are all down here in the uh, layer type. So you've got the animate camera control or animate camera preset. Animate camera control is actually really cool to use here because um, you can set individual numeric values. So what I'm going to do is choose which camera I'm going to animate and I'll choose my virtual camera. And now it's come back really, really far because of the distance from pivot here. So I'll just set that back to minus eight meters um, and maybe lower it back down a little bit. But I can then keyframe this to make it do something really neat. So for example, if I want it to do a pullback shot, 
I could either keyframe the distance from pivot or the camera pivot point. Uh, let's do it with the distance from pivot. So maybe we want to do a pull in over, say, four or five seconds like that. And we'll set this down to three meters. So we're going to go really close up. And uh, at that same point, we'll keyframe vertical. So we sort of frame up on a head shot. Um, so now what I can do is I can play back through those keyframes and the camera, the virtual camera moves. So even though I have a static camera in my XR setup, my virtual camera is able to move and pull in and give me that uh, that dolly zoom type effect inside the stage. Um, now, one important thing about virtual cameras is that their coordinates can either be global, which means that we're just setting coordinates in the stage, or we can also set them up as relative. So if I just uh, change this over to relative, then these are now relative to the um, parent camera, which means that I'm pulling this back by 4.8 meters from wherever the parent camera is. So if the parent camera moves, the virtual camera moves with it, which can be really neat if you want to pull back from, say, a jib shot, wherever the jib shot is in the stage and just go further back. Um, or if you want a global version, then you can definitively get that camera to the exact place you want in the 3D scene and uh, Disguise will uh, seamlessly map between the two coordinate systems when you flip that over. So there's a lot of power to these virtual camera workflows, and they can also integrate with the uh, in-direction controllers inside the MR set. So for example, I can cut the camera now between my real camera and my virtual camera if I disable my camera override. I can now cut seamlessly between those two cameras and have two different perspectives on my stage. Now this is uh, just an index that I'm driving numerically using my mouse wheel, but I could also link this up to an expression and have it driven by OSC or something like that. And therefore I can essentially create something of a multi-camera show with a single camera inside my studio. So this is a pretty powerful workflow. We're really excited to be promoting this workflow and pushing it in R21.1. The workflow has been overhauled and uh, is significantly easier than it used to be to achieve this. So hopefully we'll see lots of creative output now and uh, looking forward to seeing what everyone puts together with this. Let us know if you've got questions.